Uh, let's see. Okay, I think we're live. 636 on Wall Street, three hours before the open of trading. It's time to get your global macro on. Welcome to Quant Box Live, where we uncover the best fundamental investment opportunity across the global markets. Our AI-driven analysis of sentiment, inflation, employment, GDP, technical trends, open trade positioning, and seasonality. And we also look at things like yields and VIX and like, oh my gosh, so this is all economic, but we also look at market. Therefore, we can get an idea of sentiment. So anywho, anywho, um, here's all the pretty colors. You're like, what do all these pretty colors mean? Well, QuantBox automates your macroeconomic research by logging into databases all around the world, like the Fed or the OECD. Okay. Gathers all the data, pulls it all down in table forms, and displays it in pretty colors so that you have a commitment to traders report. So anyways, if you're watching this on YouTube, it's now many, 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 many hours delayed. It used to be three hours delayed. Now... I'm lazy, so I just go click, 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 click in the delay button and it just automatically puts it to midnight. So I don't know. It's nine, 10 hours delayed now. Huh, whatever. Um, so if you are watching this on YouTube and you're like, oh my God, this is amazing. Swing on quantbox.co. Take the trial. Don't worry. Just take the trial. See if it tickles your fancy. It's only eight bucks and included is an entire 16-hour macroeconomics course and a one-hour statistical analysis course. Yeah, it's well worth the $7.90. Trust me. Let me remind you that trading is risky, not appropriate for everyone. Your past performance, good or bad, not necessarily indicative of future results. Please stay small, stay humble, focus on the long term. Never risk money you cannot afford to lose. Also, while I log in, for those that are members of Investor Bootcamp, the last second in yesterday's meeting last night, I brought up Matthew Perry, the Friends guy. I didn't even watch Friends. I, I wasn't a Chandler fan. I made a comment about something in his book that recently came out. And he died last night. And I'm pretty sure I made the comment before, but I'm 100% sure if it happened, I didn't know anything about that. So if it came across wrong, like, if I said something stupid, I'm very capable of it, trust me. Um, I had no idea, but I don't think it had happened yet. But anyway, so I don't know. Uh, it, it was odd. I'm like, wait, what? When the news came out this morning that I heard that Matthew Perry died last night. Within minutes of me making a comment. Um, but anyway, so it wasn't me, I swear. But I didn't know as well. Um, so I don't know. I feel weird about it, but I don't think I said anything offensive. It was real. But let's just say uh, addiction, and I'm pretty sure he, wh whatever happened is related to his addiction. Either he finally took enough pills or it just caught up with him. It blows out your heart, blows out your kidney, blows out your brain, does about. So anyway, so I, I really feel bad for him and his family and all his fans because he was loved. Uh, but that's not enough when you have addiction. So anyways, I feel bad for him. Um, so rest in peace. It's got to be tough being the most famous person on earth. I wouldn't want fame. Honestly, I wouldn't want fame. It'd be terrible. You'll, oh, that's weird. Whoa, we were working on this over the weekend, but WTF, let me refresh. The other thing I wouldn't want would be like genius. Must have been lonely to be Einstein, knowing that all the textbooks and all the geniuses and all the professors and all the PhDs, they don't get it. They just don't get it. And that would be terrible. All right. So, look, we are working on this, and uh, she's all down today, huh? Gee whiz. Just another Manic Monday. Uh, let me grab a screenshot, and uh, I'm blessed with another opportunity to yell at people. 
Oops, that's not what I wanted. I want it snippy snip. Hang on. Boop, 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 boop. There we go. All right, so all the things I did over the weekend to fix things has made things worse, huh? <laughs> all right, uh, cool. I don't know where my snip went. Oh, there it is. Uh, so I will move that. All right, cool. All right, so hopefully we can get through this. Let's take a look. We got a big week. Uh, we have jobs, right? We have non-farm payrolls. We have the Fed. One of the things that uh, is being talked about on the on the um, on the street is not like uh, manufacturing data coming out on, <laughs> on Thursday and stuff like that. Um, what's being talked about is basically the Treasury coming out with their plan with how many Treasuries they're going to sell. When we had a government shutdown uh, several months ago, they they had to make up for the loss because they couldn't sell Treasuries because we hit our debt ceiling limit, which limits the Treasury from selling Treasuries. So then when they finally fixed all that, then suddenly there was a backlog of treasuries that needed to be sold, plus the new ones that needed to be sold. And uh, we were well over a trillion dollars for uh, that short period of time. If you remember, uh, I made the comment quite early, the yields are going to go up because the treasury is selling like crazy. And on top of that, the Fed is selling what's on their balance sheet. We call that quantitative tightening. So the government was selling a trillion and the Fed was selling a trillion. And I'm like, yields are going to go up. So I think, uh, so what the rumor on the street is, nobody expects the Fed to do anything on Wednesday, so who cares? Um, Friday's a disaster anyways, and, and <laughs> because of the, the big number last month, and there'll probably be a revision and we'll probably get to back to trend and it's probably still too high. But nonetheless, the big one is how many treasuries is the treasury going to sell? Sounds like a tongue twister, doesn't it? How much wood would a woodchuck chuck? How many treasuries would a treasury secretary sell if a treasury secretary could sell treasuries? Okay. So anyways, uh, nothing going on yet because the markets haven't opened globally. Well, in particular, in the United States, it's not open. And it just a slight, ever so slight uh, uh, tick to the risk off. Now, the United States is set to open up. But here's the thing. Uh, last night before Europe was open, this was, I think, a negative one. And now it's a negative three. Okay, so maybe uh, today's risk on in the United States will be short-lived. I don't know. Mondays are typically up days. Relief rallies that things in the Middle East are not worse. Okay, like a full-on um, attack. Okay, you probably have already done this, but it's my job to do this with you. Loading. Okay, even though oil's still down around 84, oh my God, Okay, market's still very bullish. Japanese stock market's still very bullish. Okay, U.S. dollar, still very bullish. Typically, this would be bearish this time of year. So it just shows you where we are, huh? Gold and oil, Japanese stock market. Okay. In a normal world, that might be a risk on play, but it's that's not what's happening now. Anyways, let's take a look. Where did all the bulls go? Stock market. Okay. It's a lot of contracts. Okay. So the stock market... There's 57 new, 57,000 new contracts long. You see it's 50-50. OK. 
Okay? But some of the bears came out and went long. Still 50-50. Okay. Yields. Interesting. Lots of bulls, but double that, right? Uh, how do you say it? Like, there's twice as many less <laughs> bears. <laughs> I'm working on my double negatives. Okay. All right. So anyway, so some half of these guys became bulls, and the other half just stayed out. Okay. Nonetheless, still big bearish trend. So this is price coming down and yield going up. Okay. Now, last week I I bought the 20 year. Okay. Denise said, uh, oh, Matthew Perry passed on the 28th. So I I said it last night. I didn't know. I didn't know. Yeah, I just, uh, I'm not plugged into pop culture news. So I just didn't know. So anyways, if I said something stupid, uh, I apologize again. Uh, uh, let's take a look at uh, the short. People getting out of oil? That's interesting. Shorting the pound. Look at that. Definitely. Okay. Definitely working its way towards 60% short. And that's, to me, really when it becomes trendy bearish. Okay. Looks like, yeah, yeah, anyways, definitely going there. So um, shorting pound, huh? Shorting oil, but very few people are shorting oil. But the money has gone there. It's interesting. Even though the market's heavily bullish, money did go. Some money did go to short, so that, that's interesting. You guys probably forget to scroll down, huh? So uh, you can do things like if it makes it easier. Okay, a little more bulls on the stock market, even though the stock market fell. So this, okay, this is the actual stock market falling. Okay, and the market is bearish. Okay, but it is trying to gather more bulls. This is not the net. This is not looking at the number of contracts long, subtracting the number of contracts short, and coming out with a net. No, it's just bulls. This is the price of the S&P 500 falling. So we're down near 4K. Okay, the market is bearish. And so right now you could, looking at this chart, you could say you're still bearish because you're bearish until these gray bars become a positive integer. Yeah, Emil says uh, same uh, quant box errors. Yeah, we're logging into the cloud, so we'll all have the same errors. So it's uh, one of the – so we, we were working on tweaking some things and adding some things, and they must have done something, the developers. And it's just like one table out of – you know, like no joke, there's got to be a 1,000 tables that quant box looks at to do all this. Like it's not like there's a spreadsheet. And we're and we're redrawing everything with crayons. Um, it's it's a complicated mess of tables. <laughs> yeah. So, anyways, um, 
taking a look at maybe do a different asset class. Uh, oil. Okay, slightly less bulls. Here's the price of oil. Big drop, got to almost 90, big drop. Okay, tried to recover, big drop. But the market is still bullish. That's what these gray bars, this is, the, you know, these are bulls. So price is coming down, but the market is still bullish. Slightly less, as you can see here, because really these gray bars are just redrawing this. Okay. It's the number of bullish contracts. So the market is still bullish. So you could have, you know, make arguments, for example, like, you're buying dips. As long as the market remains bullish. The other thing that you could do while using this tool is, you know, if you start to see a downward trend in the number of contracts long. So, right, this starts dropping. Then you could change, change teams and at least go neutral. So you could play the same game like, uh, okay, that's not price. That's the number of contracts. Okay, here we're doing price. What used to be resistance becomes support. This is number of contracts long. You see, it's, it looks the same. Same, same. No, it's different. We're measuring completely different things, but we're borrowing from technical analysis, let's say. So if the number of contracts long drops below, let's say 75%, then you, you maybe you go neutral. Okay, anyways, so we'll borrow from technical analysis. Nice little tool, huh? Have you ever seen the Commitment of Traders report? CFTC.gov. I used to download this sucker. I mean, 20 years ago, download this sucker. Okay, so you go to Commitment of Traders. And let's do financial, not with options. And that's what it looks like. That's what Quantbox looks like. It looks at all of this data. This is just one thing it's looking at. One out of a thousand tables. It's just looking at this. See, I mean, I'm telling you. Here's the number of contracts. Here's the change. Okay. For example. So it's looking at the number of contracts, long and short, and it redisplays everything this way. See, so right? So, anyways, pretty. Pretty. All right, so uh, let's take a look at the scatter plot. See what's oh no way! Even that's down. Everything's wow. Hmm. I wonder if our like data link into like one provider is down. Like it would work, except all the data from the Fed is not coming through, or something. <laughs> you know, like uh, something like that. Huh, 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 huh. All right. Well, there's nothing I can do about this. Uh, I can't go in and reprogram the cloud. Let's see what we do have. Okay. Bitcoin's still up 15% for the week. All right. Let's see what else. This was down. Yeah. Okay. That's what they were supposed to be working on. Weird, even the disclaimer, that's the disclaimer, has errors. I can't even get rid of it. Interesting, even the disclaimer, strange. Anyways, uh, this is looking at COT data that we just reviewed on the Commitment of Traders report, okay? Gathering from various brokerage firms, 
aka liquidity providers, we can see the position of retail traders. And the way to kind of play this is by looking at um, the extremes. Oops, delete, delete. Okay, you wanna look at the extremes, like maybe take the top five and you kinda wanna look at the bottom five and say, many retail traders are wrong. Not all of them. But we know many retail traders don't do research. They trade their favorite pairs. Why are you trading that? They're my favorite. <laughs> really? You have favorites? I always trade Aussie versus Kiwi. Okay. And so what you typically do is just one piece, by the way. Just one piece. When you're looking for something to trade, you can say, well, maybe I'll go check these things out. That's all. Okay. It's just, and say, um, these knuckleheads are probably wrong. They're retail. They're not institution. Institutionals, um, you theoretically anyways, right? Theoretically have research and backing and a strategy and staff and all this kind of stuff. And retail is just some kid somewhere fire, playing Forex like it's Fortnite. All right, cool. So anyways, you might want to look at these ones and say, oh, they're heavily, heavily, heavily long. I'm going to look to short. And these guys are heavily, heavily, heavily short. So you're going to look to long. You, did, you don't just do it, of course. You don't just fire up the Aussie yen and go long because it's retail is 80% short. But you can put it on your to-do list, like things to watch this week. If if euro yen reverses for and starts going up, you're going to hit all their stops. That's how I want you to think about it. This is all retail stops, and you want to blast through them, right? In same way, all these retail traders are long. So if the market shorts. Remember, their retail, their stops are probably 30, 40 pips away or even closer. So you're going you're gonna to take out all their stops. You're a stop hunter now, right? Nobody hunts your stops because you're a killer. Okay. So who knows? So uh, if there's an up moment, you would, you would still do all the other things. You would still do your proper technical analysis and all that kind of stuff. Um, but what this shows is um, there's no respect for the risk off that we have potentially in our market. So the all these might be up today. Today seems to be like a relief rally day. And then something happens, and I, I, I'm, I'm probably certain, I'm mostly probably certain, that there will be an event. I don't know when the event will be, and I don't know what it is. I don't know what it'll be, but there's a lot of risk in the world right now, whether it's economic or geopolitical. And uh, like, no, like for example, nobody thinks the Fed's going to raise interest rates, so they do it. <laughs> I almost would, but then that, I don't know if that makes you a good central banker, right? So anyways, uh, okay. And then the war in the Middle East, it's just... It just takes one rocket. It's just one dude with one button to change the world. You don't need to be a hero to fire a rocket from 500 miles away. Where did it land? Nah, it doesn't matter. All right. So, yeah, you, that doesn't take courage or uh, her, 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 heroicism. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> Um, so anyways, like, boom, that's it. Like, that could be now. It could be later. Uh, who knows? Uh, yeah. Who knows? So uh, that, to me, that's hanging around all the time. Okay. So uh, actually, let me go right back to that. So you could, like, 
uh cad swissy okay so you're like um cad swissy and uh retail traders are heavily long Wait, what? <laughs> it's perplexing, isn't it? It's kind of like looking at someone else's chart, right? And you're like, wait, what? You're long? Why are you long? It can't fall any further. Would you agree this trend seems to be down? Well, you don't even have to agree because you're like, but there's no moving average. No, no, no. What we've done is calculated the slope of the mean over time and then did a linear progression forward seven days. And down is the answer. Quanpox doesn't think. It doesn't have any emotions. It just says the slope of the mean. So you have to calculate the mean price. Keep calculating the mean price. Keep calculating the mean price. Okay, and as you do that over time, the mean price, 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 the mean price. Okay, actually, I didn't draw this properly because it'd actually be about here, actually. So anyways, uh, it calculates the mean, the slope of the mean, and then, of course, uh, right, this is standard deviation. You guys know how to do this. Pretty simple mathematics. Take right sigma squared and the square root of sigma squared all right so anyways uh so you look at that and it's bearish that's all that's all that's all that's bearish and uh what is it 80 percent of retail traders are long huh all right so like i said maybe this goes up but I, I want to make sure you don't look at the retail stuff and say, this should go up in the future. No, what you should look at is kind of like this is more probable. Okay. Now, this calendar is crazy weird. All right. I'm going to yell at the developers about lots of things. One of them is this calendar sucks. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, they were supposed to work on this. Let me just take a look. I haven't seen it since last night. Okay, that did update. So they worked on this, sort of. But anyway, so look at uh, GDP now. Uh, United States is winning. Wow, huh? United States, 4.9. New Zealand, 0. 0.9. Australia, 0. 0.4. Okay. Wow. Canada, zero. Wow, huh? United Kingdom, 0. 0.2. Euro area, 0. 0.1. Oh, my God. And then you're like, why is Japan doing so well? It's got some of the best GDP on the entire planet at 1.2%. You're like, wait, what? The long That's like half of the long-term average, right? Like, well, in the United States, we know that our star, or uh, I guess you'd say why, um, potential GDP is 2.2%. 
No, it may have changed to 1.8%. So whether so let's just say two. So if you're pulling out one, you have you're halfway to potential GDP. Uh so 5.0 is right out there, as they say at the in the quest for the holy grail. Huh? Do not count to two unless you're going to three. Five is right out. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, 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 uh. Take a look at maybe some of our favorites here. Since we're talking about favorite currency pairs. Owser, man. So yeah, there's one da data set somewhere. Anywho. Um, mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. here's the thing if you look at seasonality this is what we want we want the up you see and it's just not happening is remarkable isn't it gdp 4.9 versus 0 0.1 jim says so the dollar should weaken well normally this time of year yeah yeah mm -hmm. yeah for sure normally um one way i added this and uh I created this for one of my annual outlooks, quarterly outlooks. I think way back, maybe the March one, I added this in March to QuantBox. And what I was showing was I expected in October, November, and December to be buying Euro dollar, to be buying pound dollar. Okay. Uh, I don't really trade USD yen. Uh, buying Aussie dollar, buying Kiwi dollar and uh, selling USD CAD and buying the S&P 500, for example. That was what I expected to do in January. And, uh, well, it's not happening now. And, of course, once we roll into November, these are going to update in opposite directions, right? Well, you know... War is hell on the financial markets. Okay. Everybody gets rich during a time of peace. Two guys get rich during a time of war and everyone else gets poor. <clears throat> okay. So yeah, war is not ideal. It leaves somebody in devastation and will lead the other person in debt and with inflation so anyways um yeah so yeah 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 dollars should be weakening stock market should be going up yeah for sure we can take a look at that mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and so it's uh, definitely a level of stress because i intend to be long i intended to be long and as you can see here well it ain't long so uh, i have to be av available if i get the calling <laughs> of where the market says okay enough of this worry stuff let's get on with it okay i just don't think it's gonna happen but i have to i have to i mean it's weird you can't turn a deaf ear to that but i can't turn a deaf ear to like reality too of like um we are at the end of the fed cycle whether it's one and done or none and done um the market's going to interpret that differently and then like in next year late next year when the fed does cut you know what normally happens when the Fed cuts interest rates? The dollar gets ripper strong. 
But this COVID thing's been weird where the opposites have been true <laughs> because normally you don't have 9% inflation. And if you did, well, I suppose the only way to get that is the government. I was going to say, like, usually inflation comes from the economy, not government negligence. Um, but that's not true. If you look back into this, last time we had crazy levels of inflation, what did we have? Well, we had the Cold War, we had the, right? And inside the Cold War was the Vietnam War, which was a Cold War. which led to high debt levels and inflation and the United States coming off the gold standard because it didn't have any gold to pay its debts. So you're like, wait, what? And uh, we had social division and strife. Yeah, but besides that, everything was cool. See, right? And it's the increase in debt that creates the inflation. And guess what? That's what we got now, right? And uh, it's the government intervention to do that. Government wants to fix everyone's problems, even not even problems that don't seem to be our problems. We'll fix those too. So anyways, that money comes from somewhere and that's where this inflation's coming from. But anyways, um, down to down, down, down is the reality. And what we want is up, 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 up. Okay, so... The score is positive. Uh, now, of course, this ain't working, but this is, uh, it is neutral. COT data, okay. Markets are heavily long the S&P 500. Retail's 50-50. Seasonal says negative two, is that right? Are we in October? And November's definitely up. So we'll see. This will probably pop on the 1st, which is what? Uh, Wednesday? I guess Wednesday's the 1st. Trend is definitely down. Okay. Inflation is definitely high. So anyways. Okay. This economy's got jobs. You notice that we added that? Snuck it in there? In the scorecard? We track labor. Ooh. Hey, you're welcome. Okay. So, for example, if labor was falling, and we know from non-farm payrolls it's not, but when it does... Um, then this could at first drop from, you know, it's not red hot, it's smoking green. But uh, anyways, uh, it could drop from two to one to zero to negative one to negative two, you know, as we develop more and more of a downtrend. So anyways, we're adding that. It's hard to have a bad economy if everyone if we're adding jobs. You see, like that's why that's in there. And if everyone has jobs, then people have money. And if people have money, uh, they spend it. And if they spend it, companies are have sales. And likely, if wages are higher than inflation, which they are now, um, then they have uh, they can pay the higher price that re retail sellers have to sell their products, right? So anyway, so it pushes the stock market up. You just might buy a new iPhone if you just got a raise at work. Do you buy a new iPhone if you've lost your job? No. So, you know, that's why that's there anyways. Ah, I shouldn't have done that. Don't. Well, 
Well, we'll leave that to another um, to another day. So let's go back to the to the main page. Okay, Bitcoin is up. There's a little bit of risk on in the markets today because, and this is the thing, right? Bit of a risk on sentiment for today because there wasn't bad news. To me, that's just hedges coming off. And by Wednesday, we're adding them back, maybe. Like, so be careful. Uh, but today is being promised by Bloomberg and CNBC is an update in the markets. Okay, I'm all right with that. Bitcoin up. Okay, euro dollar really flat, but slightly bullish. SP 500. Okay, that's supposed to go the other way. So Friday was down a half a percent. Um, my hedge. My triple leverage hedge was perfect. I made 1.5%. Triple leverage. And <laughs> the actual dropped a half a percent, but if you times three is 1.5. And so uh, that's cool. That worked out. And it'll probably flip around the other way today. We'll see. Gold at 2000 and oil still on the dipsy do. And uh, I know you can't see it here, but the, the yield is not at 5.0. And as long as it's below 5.0, uh, I'm happy. In fact, uh, I'll be more happy if this drops down to four and a half. Because I have the 20 year. Cool. And in theory, I can earn 5% for 20 years. If inflation drops back down to three, three and a half, sweet, good for me. Cool. So anyways, uh, yeah, so it looks like there's lots of errors, but if you build a giant machine like QuantBox, it's like so one room in the building, somebody forgot to flip a switch. Just think of QuantBox as a giant skyscraper <laughs> of interconnected offices and floors. And somewhere somebody's like, Oh, yeah, let me go to the utility room on the 14th. And you go up there and you're like, boop, and you flip the switch. And all that data, like, it's just probably something as simple as that where one data provider uh, is doing maintenance. I don't know why they'd be doing it now. So I don't know what it is. But I will let the, the team know and we'll get on it. Cool. And like I said, uh, I had given them tasks uh, to work on over the weekend, or at least to start I over the weekend, I gave them tasks to work on. And so now they're probably starting these things. And um, I, I see they have made some small changes. But uh, anyways, we'll get on this. We'll fix it. Peace on earth. May the pips be with you. May your profits be above average. I'll be here every day. Every day. Every day. Okay. And uh, well, we don't have boring times, so your prayers have been answered. You should be appreciative of that. <laughs> yeah. And rest in peace, Matthew Perry. <laughs>